Now, Ukraine says its troops have pulled back from two more settlements in the Donetsk region. They both lie to the west of Avdivka, which fell to Moscow's forces less than two weeks ago. Now, the Ukrainian steelmaker Medinvest lost a major coal plant when that town was captured. Now, its coal mine is in Pokrovsk, the largest in Ukraine, and it is now just, remember this, just 40 kilometers, think of that, from the front line. Its steel plant, meantime, in Zaporizhia is also very, very close to the fighting there. Medinvest Group CEO Yuri Rezenkov joins me now, and I want to thank you for joining us as we continue to really parse what Ukraine is in for in the coming months. As we just mentioned, Avdivka is in Russian hands. Russian troops continue to push further west. H how would you characterize what Ukraine is facing at this hour, especially given your company? You know, you, you have thousands of employees on the front line right now, and your company is a strategic component of that Ukrainian defense. Good afternoon. Um, yes, that's true. Uh, it's not the easiest hour for Ukraine at the moment. And uh, obviously, even though everybody understood that we might lose Avdivka for quite some time now, uh, this loss was uh, resonated in, in the population. <clears throat> and as you rightly mentioned, uh, this front line is literally 35, 40 kilometers away from our main operations. So yes, it's 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 very difficult. Uh, it's even more difficult to see that we don't uh, don't see any progress with, for example, U.S. aid, uh, which is blocked right now in 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 Congress, and uh, that that creates a rather negative mood in Ukraine. But at the same time, I think there is a determination to continue. There is a determination to help the country to uh, achieve victory, uh, and and uh, we are ready to carry on. Yes, yeah, certainly President Zelensky has articulated that will. But as you mentioned, Ukrainians are fatigued. I'm sure you and your company right now are feeling that fatigue. You are still, as I mentioned, so close to the front lines. You've said your employees have already proven, and I'm quoting you now, that people are stronger than steel. But how are you keeping them safe with Russia menacing, with strikes, artillery so close by? Well, we had to imp implement uh, certain safety procedures uh, since the beginning of this full-scale invasion. Uh, first, we had uh, built uh, a cover-ups for, for our employees, so whenever there is an aerial raid, they can go and, and hide in those uh, shelters. Uh, for people who are not uh, able, because of, of the nature of their work, because they have to be on the shop floor, uh, they cannot uh, go into the shelter. We have them individual protective equipment, like helmets, like bulletproof vests. Um, so that, that's, that's the only way we can carry on our operations. Uh, as you can imagine, steel, steel business, it's a continuous operation, so you cannot stop it yeah. and start it. Uh, uh, you'll be interested to know I am a former steel worker, and when you talk about trying to keep those blast furnaces up and running, I know exactly about what you're talking about. And especially, as I said earlier, because it's so material, to Ukraine being able to continue this war effort. I want to ask you, though, about that in terms of staffing shortages. Given Ukraine is talking about further mobilization, they need even more Ukrainians to fight. So how do you keep your business going under those conditions? It's it's true. It's, it's a difficult uh, situation for most of the uh, businesses, especially those businesses that are dealing in transparent manner uh, and, and uh, fully transparent to the authorities, like, like MedInvest is. We have more than 9,000 9, our employees right now serving in defense forces of Ukraine, which is, uh, I'd say it's almost 15 percent of our workforce right now. So yes, that creates a substantial difficulty. We are trying to, to find a replacement. We are uh, arranging shifts so that people can uh, take uh, take some some extra time at work for for their colleagues who are in the front line uh, we also try to em employ more women and and that also helps to uh, to sustain operations but okay. other than that it is, it is a difficult situation and as the war will will continue as more people will have to be mobilized uh, drafted uh -huh. uh, that difficulty is going to increase and as That's I true. said, given the continuous operations, that if you want to keep these steel plants going, it really doesn't have to be continuous. You mentioned USAID. It is now stalled, fatigue setting in, as you also mentioned with Ukraine and perhaps even with European allies. I mean, 
you guys had that company as of stall that was that really I iconic battle, very sad and horrific battle that happened at the beginning of this war. Given all that Ukrainians there and elsewhere have sacrificed, what do you tell Congress right now about what's at stake if Ukraine does does fall to Russia? It, it's it's a, it's very simple. It's the Ukrainian existence of uh, Ukraine as a state and the Ukrainians as as a nation. That's that's what's at stake. So if Ukraine fails, that means that uh, the nation failed, and that the international uh, law, international support failed, and uh, that will uh, that will change the, the the world completely, in my view, because it's it's going to be a new world in which you 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 cannot rely on international rules, in which you cannot rely on aggressor being punished. Uh, so that that will create a very bad precedent, in in my opinion. Yuri Rosenkopf will continue to check in with you um, as this conflict progresses. Thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you.